Today's tutorial should hopefully be a much simpler, easy tutorial for everyone to follow along. We're going to go step by step in creating this particular abstract animated loop. It's going to be very simple geometry nodes. So with that, let's go ahead and begin today's tutorial. In our default scene, we're going to go ahead and bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then switch this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree after which we'll tap N to remove the side panel. Then we can just zoom in, select the group input, and tap X to delete it. Now we're going to go ahead and add in an icosphere. So let's press Shift A and search for the icosphere. Now we can go ahead and plug this mesh into the group output, and we already have our base. However, since we want to displace this and we want very smooth displacements, we need a good number of subdivisions. So even though subdivision level of 7 seems like it's super smooth, when we actually go ahead and create the displacement, it might not be enough. But not to overload our actual viewport, we'll keep it at 7 for now and increase it just before the final render. Next, we have to actually create the displacement. For that, let's press Shift A and search for a set position node. Now this set position is going to let us access every single individual vertex and move its position based off of the offset that we give over here. So we're going to offset it using a wave texture. Now when we plug this wave texture into the offset just like this, you'll see we get some crazy distortions. To actually reduce this, what we're going to do is start off by preventing it from going over to the top right like that by using a vector math node and simply subtracting a value of 0.5 on all of the axes. So we change it from add to subtract and then change all of these to a value of 0.5 and now it at least becomes centralized. Then we have to reduce the actual effect of this wave texture. For that, we select this vector math node and press shift D to duplicate it and then change this from subtract to scale and we can scale it to a very small amount. Let's go with something like 0.2. Now we already have something close to what we're looking for, but there are way too many subdivisions. So to reduce that, what we're going to do is we're going to change this scale down to something really small. Let's go with something like 0.5, and that seems to be a lot better. However, this is just way too plain. To make this more of the shape that we were looking for, we're going to go ahead and increase the distortion. And we're going to increase the distortion to something all the way high, like 30, to get this sort of a shape. And that's actually all there is to it. So now that we have this particular shape, you can see that even though it looked smooth before, you can clearly see all of the different edges. Now we can remove this even further by setting the shadings to smooth. So we'll press Shift A, search for a set shade smooth, and plug that in right over here. But even then, you see you're still able to see this little artifacts of the actual edges, which is why it's necessary to increase this subdivision even higher than 7. We can go up to 8 or even 9 before the final render. So you can see it becomes a lot lesser, but there still is a little bit of it overflowing when we take a closer look. However, the next thing to do is actually the shading. So let's start off with the shading. For that, let's press Shift A and search for a set material node and plug that in after the set shade smooth. Then we have to select the material and we can just choose the default material for now. To actually see what changes we make, we can switch our viewport shading to rendered by pressing this button over here. And we can go ahead to our render properties and switch on ray tracing. While we're at it, we can go ahead and switch this geometry node workspace to the shader editor and start playing around with the material. For the material, I actually want to make these crevices look even darker so that we can see all of these curves even more. And in previous versions of Eevee, which is Blender version 4.2 and before, we could have accessed the ambient occlusion from the EV settings right over here. But in EV Next, we no longer have ambient occlusion. So a workaround is by using the ambient occlusion node that is present over here. Now, to actually use this, we duplicate this principal BSDF and change the base color from white to something much darker. So let's change it all the way down to black. And we want to mix the original principal BSDF that we had with this new principal BSDF using a mix shader node. So let's press Shift A, search for a mix shader, and then plug it in right over here. Then we can go ahead and take this new principal BSDF and plug that in as the second shader. Once we have that down, we can go ahead and take this color input from the ambient occlusion node and plug that into the factor right over there. 
And now you see, we have pretty much the exact opposite effect of what we wanted. So we could just switch this principal BSDF node around by switching this to the first socket and that one into the second. But instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is search for a color ramp node. And I'm going to go ahead and flip the color ramp by just taking this slider and pushing it over to this side and then taking this white slider and pushing it over to the other side. Now, the reason why I'm using this color ramp is because now I get to decide exactly how much of the effect I want. You can see if I move this black slider all the way to the right, I get a lot more of these crevices to be more defined and pronounced. And if I slowly bring this in, you'll see that the effect slowly wears away and you have less pronounced crevices. So it's this versus this. However, I like it to be somewhere around here and that looks good enough for the purposes of my video. You can also bring in the white slider a bit more to, again, make these even darker, but I'm going to leave it all the way back over here for the time being and I might play around with it towards the end. The next thing is I want this to be a lot more glossy, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce the roughness of the main principle PSDF down to a value of maybe 0.2 and nothing more. But for the dark crevices, I want the roughness to be all the way set to 1. Now for the actual color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this from object to world and I'm just going to change the world background to be completely bright and also blue. So this is the color that I'm going to go with. Now, of course, if you're doing something like a rose, then maybe you can go ahead and make this red. You could make it pink. It's really up to you. Maybe I'll do a pinkish version, but this is what I currently have. The next thing that I'm going to do is add in a background before we start the animation. So for the background, I'm just going to press Shift A, search for a mesh plane, and then I'm going to scale it up and just rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Then to actually place it back, I'm going to move it on the y-axis by pressing G followed by Y and then just pushing it back. Now, the reason why I'm using this plane is because the nice little white from the light is going to make this side a lot brighter than this section, which if we did not have, would just have the background completely pink at the exact same saturation. But adding this in causes this nice gradient that I particularly like. Next, we can start off with the animation. So we're going to go ahead and place the camera first. Let's go into the camera view by pressing this button or pressing zero on your numpad and then pressing this lock button to actually lock the camera to view. Then you can go ahead and just rotate it until you have it present within your screen. And you can go ahead and give yourself some more room. And of course, zoom in and rotate this to be exactly at whatever position you want. You can zoom in as well as pan the view to get whatever you think is best suited for your animation. Next, with the camera selected from the outliner over here, I'm going to go over to the actual camera properties and change the focal length to maybe something like 18, just to give it a wider field of view, after which I'll go ahead and just zoom in appropriately. The next thing that I'm going to do is go down to the viewport display and increase pass bar 2 all the way to 1 so that I don't see anything outside my camera view. Next, I think the light is a little too close, so I'm going to select the light from here and then just press G and move it a little bit more towards the side. And I think that looks good. The next thing is I'm going to increase the radius as well from 0.1 to maybe a value of one meter, just so that all of the reflections are a little softer. Maybe a value of two will be even better. So now that we have everything ready for the animation, we can start off with the actual animation. For that, we can go over to our output properties and change the frame rate to 60 frames per second. We can increase the resolution to 200%, which makes it a 4K animation. Then we can choose the frame range, and I want this to be a 5 second long animation at 60 frames per second. So the end frame should be 300. I can choose the output folder to be the same folder where I save the blend file. And the file format, I'm going to change to FFmpeg video. With the encoding changed from Matroska to MPEG4 and an output quality of Perceptree lossless. Then I can go ahead and switch this over from the shader editor back to the geometry node editor and then select the main geometry node object that you had. After that, I'm going to go over to the wave texture, go down to the phase offset and play around with this value. So I'm just going to increase the timeline so that we can see it and press the back arrow to go to frame zero. On frame zero, I'm going to hover over the phase offset and then just tap I. This adds in a keyframe at frame zero. And just to make things a little faster, I'll go ahead and switch back to a viewport shading of solid. Then after I add in a keyframe at frame zero, I'll just select the actual texture node to see the keyframe on my timeline. Then I'll go over to frame 300 and just change this phase offset to a value of 2 star pi, 
which is one full rotation or one full wavelength as well, making it a perfect loop. And then I can hover over it and tap I. Then with the object selected and the texture selected so that I can see the keyframes, I'll go ahead and tap T and choose linear so that I get a linear interpolation and we get a smooth loop of this animating over time. Now, if you see the frame rate is extremely slow. So to get an idea of how fast it's actually moving, you can go ahead and just reduce the subdivisions down to something like six and you'll see it instantly becomes a lot faster, but it's still going way too slow. So to make it play at real time, I'll change this from play every frame to frame dropping. And that will give me a realistic idea of how fast this is actually moving and what the animation actually looks like. Once you're happy with the way everything looks, you can go ahead and increase the subdivisions back to something like eight or nine, switch this over to rendered or not, it's up to you. But then you can go ahead and just press render animation. I hope this tutorial taught you something and was fairly simple to follow along. I will be creating multiple tutorials like this and scheduling them for a consistent upload over the next two weeks while I'm going to focus on creating my own animated short film. I'm really excited to be sharing that with you all. So let me know whether you would want some sort of teasers, trailers, or behind the scenes content while I create that short film. Until then, I've just released a video explaining what the matrix nodes are and how you use transformation matrices. I also have demystifying videos on the Voronoi texture, which I think would definitely be worth a watch. But until the next few videos come out, Thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.